According to the Book of Revelation, the new earth is our final destination our forever home. It is the place humanity will live forever. After Jesus' second coming. After the judgment. After we live in heaven with him for one thousand years. The new earth will be your home, made brand new in God's time. And the Bible tells us exactly what to expect. What does the Bible say the new earth is? The new earth is exactly as it sounds. It is a new earth recreated. God, who created the earth in Genesis will burn everything on this current, corrupted earth, cleansing it, and then recreate it as originally intended. The new earth is mentioned specifically in Isaiah 65 and 66, 2 Peter chapter 3, and Revelation 21. To get a full understanding, we'll also have to look at creation, the origin of sin, God's plan for redemption, and Jesus' return in the end time. It's on this new, perfect earth that his people will live forever. You can find this truth in Revelation 21 verses 1 to 8. 1. IT is like the Garden of Eden. The Bible's description of New Jerusalem and the New Earth points back to God's creative power and expression. The use of precious jewels and pure gold throughout the city point to the perfect creation of God's original Eden. You get more vivid imagery of this Edenic quality in Revelation 22. The river of life flows from the throne of God at the heart of the holy city. This is similar to the river mentioned in the creation story in Genesis 2 verses 10 to 14. A river flowed out of Eden to water the garden, and there it divided and became four rivers. The name of the first is the Pishon. It is the one that flowed around the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good, Delium and onyx stone are there. The name of the second river is the Gion. It is the one that flowed around the whole land of Cush. And the name of the third river is the Tigris, which flows east of Assyria. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. Right away you can notice one big similarity. There is one river flowing out of Eden which gives life to the rest of the lands. The river of life in the new earth Jerusalem flows from God Almighty. It gives life to the tree of life standing on its banks. It is no coincidence that the river flowing from God's throne waters the tree and the life-giving fruits it yields. Even the leaves themselves give life. Instead of falling each year as they do on earth, the leaves of the tree of life are used for healing. Finally, like Eden, there will be nothing cursed. It is as if the very presence of God and Jesus in the city prevents such tragedies, see Revelation 22 verses 1 to 5. Its city is built by Christ himself. Hebrews 11 verse 10 says, For Abraham waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Like Eden in the beginning of the world, Jesus and God the Father create the new Jerusalem together. In fact, before Jesus parts with his disciples and is killed, he tells them, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am you may be also, John 14 verses 1 to 3. You can find this truth in Genesis 1, John 14, and Revelation 21. God will dwell with his people there. The Bible says in no uncertain terms that God will dwell with his people in the holy city on the new earth. In John's vision in Revelation 21, he describes the scene in which the city comes down from heaven and a loud voice declares, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. 5. IT is the earth, are he created. When God created the earth in Genesis, there was one purpose. God spent creation week creating spaces, and then filling them. He created the atmosphere filled with perfectly balanced gases to sustain life, 
and then he filled it. He created dry land and filled the land with plants. He created the air and water and filled both with living things. He filled the empty land with mammals. God created Eden and then put Adam and Eve there to commune with him. When creation was finished, he created a new day for Sabbath, a day of rest and relationship with him. Following the sequence of creation, you can see the earth was created for humanity, just as Sabbath was created for humanity, Mark 2 verse 27. According to the historic account in scripture, things did not go as planned, and the earth has been Satan's dominion since the fall, when Adam and Eve chose to go against what God asked. The sin that entered the world at that time has permanently damaged the earth itself and all things in it, bringing suffering and havoc. In order to set things right, God will destroy this broken world and create a new one in its place, the new earth. You can find this truth in Genesis 1-2 and Revelation 21. What is the purpose of the new earth? The way God once created all things tells us that he is a God of order and of sense. He doesn't do anything without a reason. So, why did he not create the earth perfectly in the first place? Why did he not eradicate sin at its start? Can't God just reuse this earth instead of making a whole new one? Well, in the beginning, God did create the earth perfectly. He even created people perfectly in his own image. God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good, Genesis 1 verse 31. He created male and female and blessed them, giving them dominion over the earth and all that was on it, Genesis 1 verse 28. However, the whole story begins with how humanity chose to exercise the freedom of choice God gave them when he made them. And at the first chance to use that freedom of choice, they chose to explore the option God warned them against choosing. The Bible says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, Romans 6 verse 23. It also says, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, Romans 3 verse 23. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come into mind. It's not enough that we just have a beautiful place to live. It's restoring what God intended for us from the beginning. We'll finally get to see what life would have been like if humanity had never fallen into sin, and we'll get to live out this perfection for eternity. What will happen to the old earth? If God is going to create a new earth, what will happen to the old one? In Luke 12, when speaking to thousands, Jesus said, I came to cast fire on the earth, and would that it were already kindled. The prophet Isaiah describes these final happenings in plain terms. Behold, the Lord will empty the earth and make it desolate, and he will twist its surface and scatter its inhabitants. The earth shall be utterly empty and utterly plundered, for the Lord has spoken this word. Isaiah 24 verses 1 and 3. The words used in scripture to describe this destruction are strong ones. The planet will be burned completely until it is unrecognizable, its surface twisted, its population scattered and gone. According to John's vision described in Revelation, the first heaven and first earth will pass away completely. Anything that made this earth corrupt will be disintegrated. We won't have to worry about anything imperfect resurfacing. The current troubling times are not part of God's plan. This is a deviation, because we as humanity chose to follow the devil's deception that by eating the fruit we would be like God, and know both good and evil.